In a realm where whispers of magic still lingered in the air, and the echoes of ancient spells could be heard in the rustling leaves, there existed an enchanted forest known by few and seen by even fewer. This forest, shrouded in mystery and bathed in perpetual verdure, thrived under the tender care of a lineage of guardians whose destiny was intertwined with its very essence. The legend spoke of a time when the world was young and magic coursed unabated through every stream and valley. It was during this age of wonders that the forest was born, not from seed and soil, but from the confluence of the world's purest magics. A living testament to the harmony of nature, it changed with the seasons, each cycle more magnificent than the last, under the vigilant watch of the Guardian Prince. Join us now on a journey through the heart of this enchanted realm, where magic and nature intertwine, and the seasons themselves dance to the song of the forest. Let the tranquility of this ancient tale lull you into a peaceful slumber as we uncover the mysteries hidden within the whispering willows and the secrets carried on the wind. Chapter One, The Awakening of the Forest. In a realm where whispers of magic still lingered in the air and the echoes of ancient spells could be heard in the rustling leaves, there existed an enchanted forest known by few and seen by even fewer. This forest, shrouded in mystery and bathed in perpetual verdure, thrived under the tender care of a lineage of guardians whose destiny was intertwined with its very essence. The legend spoke of a time when the world was young and magic coursed unabated through every stream and valley. It was during this age of wonders that the forest was born, not from seed and soil, but from the confluence of the world's purest magics. A living testament to the harmony of nature, it changed with the seasons each cycle more magnificent than the last, under the vigilant watch of the guardian prince. This prince, unlike any other, was bestowed with a singular gift passed down through generations. The ability to communicate with plants. They whispered the secrets of the earth to him shared the tales of the wind and confided the dreams of the water. In return, he protected the sanctity of the forest, ensuring that its magic remained untainted by the world outside. As centuries passed, the legend of the enchanted forest grew weaving itself into the tapestry of folklore. It was said that within its bounds, one could witness the purest expressions of nature, from the gentle bloom of the first spring flower to the silent descent of the last autumn leaf. Yet, as alluring as it was, a veil of enchantment ensured that only those with a true heart could ever hope to find it. And so the forest remained, a 
hidden jewel of nature, waiting for those rare souls who might appreciate its wonders. Among these was the current guardian, Prince Alar, whose bond with the forest was deeper than any before him. His story, like that of the forest, was one of magic, mystery, and an unbreakable vow to protect the cycle of life that danced within its leafy realm. In the heart of the enchanted forest, where the canopy whispered ancient melodies and sunlight danced through leaves of emerald and gold, there moved a figure in harmony with the world around him. Prince Alar, the guardian of this verdant realm, walked with the grace of the wind and the quiet authority of the mountain. His connection to the forest was not merely a duty. It was a bond forged in the very essence of his soul, a sacred trust passed down through the ages. Alar's days were filled with the endless tasks of guardianship, each one a ritual in its own right. He spoke to the trees as old friends, listening to their tales of the sun and the stars, and in return, they shared with him the secrets of growth and resilience. The rivers and streams offered him their melodies, a symphony of life that flowed through the heart of the forest ensuring it remained vibrant and alive. Each morning, as the dawn painted the sky in hues of pink and orange, Ayalar would perform the rite of awakening. A gentle call to the sleeping flora and fauna that it was time to greet the new day. With a voice that carried the warmth of the sun, he sang an ancient hymn, a melody so pure that even the most slumberous bloom could not resist its call. Under his care, the forest awakened each day in a burst of life, a testament to the harmony between the guardian and his charge. But Ayler's connection to the forest was not merely one of stewardship. It was a deep, spiritual bond that allowed him to feel its joys and pains as if they were his own. When the forest thrived, a sense of peace and fulfillment enveloped him, as if he were a leaf basking in the sunlight. And when it suffered, his heart ached with a sorrow as deep as the roots that anchored the ancient trees to the earth. It was during one of his daily walks, a ritual meant to maintain the delicate balance of this ecosystem, that Alar felt a disturbance, a dissonance in the natural harmony that was as jarring as a dark cloud passing over the sun. It was a feeling he could not ignore, for it spoke of something or someone unfamiliar within the boundaries of his realm. As the chill of winter's last breath dissipated under the gentle warmth of the sun, the enchanted forest stirred from its slumber. Under the watchful eye of Prince Ayler, the guardian of nature, the transformation was nothing short of miraculous. With each step he took, the frost retreated, and in its place, 
life burst forth in a symphony of colors and scents. It was the time of the spring's first bloom, a moment of renewal and hope, cherished by all who witnessed it. Eiler, with the grace of a seasoned conductor, led this transformation, his magic intertwining with the very essence of the forest. He spoke the ancient words of awakening, passed down through generations of guardians, and the ground beneath his feet responded. Flowers, shy at first, peeked through the snow, their petals unfurling like sails catching the wind. Trees, their branches heavy with the promise of green, dressed themselves in vibrant hues, a testament to the cycle of life that Ailer so diligently protected. This annual spectacle was not just a display of natural beauty. It was a sacred ritual that affirmed the bond between the guardian and the enchanted forest. The animals, too, played their part, emerging from their winter retreats to join in the celebration of spring. Birds sang melodies that had been silent during the cold months, their tunes a harmonious backdrop to the unfolding tableau. Among the countless blooms, the whispering willows held a special place in Elar's heart. They were the oldest inhabitants of the forest, witnesses to centuries of change, and their gentle sway seemed to tell stories of days gone by. It was to these willows that Elar now turned, sensing that the disturbance he had felt was somehow linked to their ancient vows. As he approached, the air grew thick with whispers, not of wind through leaves, but of words imbued with urgency. The willows spoke of an intruder, a presence that was both foreign and familiar, stirring the undercurrents of magic that flowed through the forest. Ilar listened, his brow furrowed in concern, for the balance of his realm rested on the harmony between all living things, and any disruption could have unforeseen consequences. Determined to uncover the source of the disturbance, Ailar set forth from the willows, his resolve as firm as the ancient roots that anchored the forest. The spring's first bloom continued around him, a vibrant testament to the cycle of life. But his thoughts were now focused on the mystery that lay hidden within the verdant depths of his domain. Prince Alar's journey led him deeper into the heart of the enchanted forest, where the trees stood tall and proud, guardians of ancient secrets. The whispering willows with their graceful boughs and leaves that shimmered in the sunlight, seemed to beckon him closer, their whispers growing more insistent. Elar, attuned to the language of the forest, listened carefully, piecing together the murmurs that spoke of an unfamiliar presence. As he ventured further, the air around him thrummed with a subtle magic, a sign that he was drawing near. The willows, their whispers now a chorus, 
told of a young woman who had wandered into their midst. Her heart pure, her spirit curious. This was no ordinary intruder, but one who, perhaps unknowingly, carried a spark of magic within her. A rarity in a world where the ancient ways were fading. Ayalar approached a clearing, where the sunlight filtered through the canopy in golden beams. And there, amidst the whispering willows, he saw her. The stranger, cloaked in the light of the forest, stood in awe of the beauty around her, a witness to the wonders she had never imagined. She was Leora, her name as yet unknown to Ayler, but her presence already woven into the fabric of the forest's tale. Their eyes met, a guardian and an intruder, yet the expected clash of worlds did not come to pass. Instead, there was a moment of silent recognition, a fleeting connection that bridged the gap between them. Aylar saw not a threat, but a soul touched by the magic of the forest, her intentions pure, her wonder genuine. He stepped forward, breaking the silence. You have entered a realm that is sacred, guarded against those who would do it harm. Yet the willows whisper of your innocence, of a heart that seeks not to take, but to understand. Tell me, stranger, what brings you to this hidden world? Leora, taken aback by the prince's sudden appearance and the gentle authority in his voice, found the words escaping her lips before fear could seize them. I stumbled upon this place by chance, she confessed, drawn by tales of beauty and magic I thought were but dreams. I meant no harm only to behold the wonders I have longed to see. Ailar listened, the forest itself seeming to hold its breath as Leora spoke. The willows, with their age-old wisdom, rustled softly, as if in approval. The guardian prince, moved by Lyora's sincerity, and the unexpected truth in her words made a decision that would alter the course of their destinies. You have ventured where few have dared and fewer still have been permitted to remain, Elar said, his voice echoing the depth of his responsibility. The forest has chosen to reveal itself to you, a gift not lightly given, but it requires a promise in return, a promise to respect its sanctity, to protect its secrets. Can you make this promise, Leora, of the outer world? With a heart filled with awe and a spirit ignited by the call of adventure, Leora pledged her respect and protection to the enchanted forest, unaware of the true depth of the commitment she had made. Aylar, accepting her vow, knew that the days ahead would test the strength of her promise and the truth of the willow's whispers. Leora, now standing at the heart of a tale as old as the whispering willows themselves, found her destiny entwined with the magic of the enchanted forest. Her arrival, a gentle ripple in the calm waters of Ayler's world, 
was a mystery that beckoned to be understood, not just by the prince, but by Leora herself. Before the forest called her to its hidden depths, Leora lived on the fringes of a world that had long forgotten the ancient magics. She was the daughter of a humble gardener, her hands as accustomed to the soil as they were to the dreams of wild, untamed places filled with enchantment. Her father's tales of a world beyond their garden where nature spoke and magic flowed as freely as the rivers ignited a spark within her. A yearning for something more. A desire to witness the wonders spoken of in hushed tones and whispered legends. It was this yearning that led Leora to the forest's edge. Her heart guided by stories passed down through generations. Her path lit by the glow of her own innate magic. A magic she had yet to understand. The forest, sensing her pure heart and the latent power within her, opened its borders, inviting her into a realm where the impossible was merely hidden, waiting for the right moment to reveal itself. As Aylor and Leora stood amidst the ancient willows, the guardian prince realized that the mysterious intruder was, in fact, a kindred spirit. Her arrival was not by mere chance, but perhaps by the forest's own design. A call to someone who could bridge the worlds of magic and mankind. You have stepped into a legacy as old as the stars, Alar said, his voice a blend of awe and warning. The enchanted forest recognizes the light within you, Leora, but to truly belong, you must prove your heart not just to me, but to the very essence of this realm. Leora, her eyes wide with wonder, and a touch of fear, nodded. She understood the weight of Ayler's words, the importance of the promise she had made. I am ready, she whispered, her voice steady despite the uncertainty that danced like shadows around them. And so, the stage was set for the trial of vines, a rite of passage that would test Leora's resolve, her respect for the natural world, and her ability to stand as a protector of the enchanted forest. Alar, with a heavy heart, knew that the trial would not be easy. It was a path that demanded truth, courage, and a willingness to face the unknown. The forest, ever watchful, awaited Leor's first step into the unknown. The beginning of a journey that would reveal the depth of her spirit and the true nature of the magic that called her to this hidden world. The morning sun broke through the canopy casting a mosaic of light across the forest floor as Leora and Prince Ilar approached the heart of the enchanted realm. Here, where the magic of the forest was strongest, stood an ancient circle of stones, each one taller than a man and covered in moss and creep. It was within this sacred space 
that the trial of fines would take place, a testament to one's commitment to the forest and its ancient laws. Alar turned to Leora, his eyes reflecting the gravity of the moment. The trial you are about to face is as old as the forest itself. It will challenge you, test your resolve, and ask for a proof of your respect for all living things. Remember, the forest does not seek perfection, but truth and a willing heart. Leora nodded, her resolve firm despite the flutter of nerves. She stepped into the circle, her bare feet grounding her to the earth's energy. The air within the stones hummed with power, and as Ailer began to chant in the ancient tongue of the forest, the vines around the stones stirred to life. The trial had begun. First, the vines formed shapes and patterns, weaving images of the forest's history, its creation, the guardians who had protected it, and the many challenges it had faced. Leora watched, mesmerized by the living tapestry, until the vines paused and formed a single word, protect. The meaning was clear. To be a guardian of the forest, one must understand its history, its pain, and its beauty. Leora stepped forward, speaking her vow aloud. I promise to protect you, to honor your past and safeguard your future. Satisfied, the vines shifted, creating a new challenge. This time, they grew thick and fast, encircling Leora, not with the intent to harm, but to test her resolve. She was to escape, not by cutting through them, but by understanding them, by communicating her intent and respect. Closing her eyes, Leora reached out with her heart, whispering words of respect and kinship to the vines. Slowly, they responded, loosening their grip, allowing her to find a path through them, a testament to her patience and empathy. Finally, the vines presented the last test. They bloomed with flowers, each bearing a different scent, some intoxicatingly sweet, others dangerously bitter. Leora was to choose one, a decision that would reveal her understanding of balance within the forest. Too sweet, and it could signify a desire for the forest's beauty without accepting its dangers. Too bitter, and it could mean a readiness for its trials, but not its joys. With a thoughtful heart, Leora selected a flower of moderate fragrance, symbolizing her acceptance of the forest in all its complexity. Alar, witnessing her choice, knew then that Leora's heart was true. As the trial concluded, the vines receded, leaving the circle of stones as it was, silent and ancient. Leora, now standing at the center, felt a change within her, a deeper connection to the forest and its magic. Alar approached, a smile of approval lighting his face. You have passed the trial of vines, Leora. The forest has accepted you, as have I. Together, 
we shall guard its magic, protect its legacy. The enchanted forest, with its whispering willows and ancient stones, had found a new guardian in Leora, a bridge between the world of men and the realm of magic. Her journey had only just begun, but in her heart, she knew she was home. With the completion of Leora's trial, the foundation is set for her adventures with Prince Aylar in the Enchanted Forest. Their journey together will be one of discovery, challenge, and the deepening of their bond with each other and the magical realm they are sworn to protect. The stage is now set for the Dance of Seasons, where the true depth of their courage and love for the forest will be tested. Chapter 2 The Dance of Seasons As the wheel of the year turned, bringing with it the fervent blaze of summer, forest transformed once again. Under the vigilant care of Prince Alar and the newly initiated guardian, Leora, it thrived, its life force pulsating with a vibrant intensity that could be felt with every step through its dappled sunlight. Leora, her senses attuned to the subtle shifts in the forest's mood, marveled at the abundance of life. The air was thick with the fragrance of blooming flowers, the chorus of birdsong, and the buzzing of bees. The forest, in its summer garb, was a spectacle of color and sound, a celebration of life at its peak. Prince Aylar, seeing the wonder in Leora's eyes, took it upon himself to deepen her understanding of this splendor. Each season, he began, plays a vital role in the balance of the forest. Summer is not just a time of growth and abundance, but a period of preparation and strength. It is when the forest gathers energy for the cycles to come. Their walks through the verdant landscape became lessons in the delicate art of nature's balance. Alar taught Leora to see beyond the beauty, to understand the purpose behind each bloom, each ray of sunlight, and each drop of rain. He showed her how the tall trees provided shade for the delicate undergrowth, preserving moisture during the scorching days, and how the vibrant flowers attracted pollinators, ensuring the continuation of life. But summer, with its fierce blaze, also brought challenges. Ahelar explained the importance of fire in the cycle of renewal. In moderation, fire cleanses, clearing old growth to make way for the new. But unchecked, it can ravage and destroy. It was a lesson in respect and caution, in the power of nature, both to give and to take away. Leora learned to listen to the forest, to the crackling of dry leaves and the whisper of the streams that quenched the earth's thirst. She witnessed the symbiosis between plant and animal, the mutual respect that sustained the web of life. And as she did, her bond with the forest deepened, 
her understanding of her role as its guardian becoming clearer with each passing day. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink, Elar and Leora sat by a gently flowing stream. The air was cool, a welcome respite from the day's heat, and the forest around them hummed with the sound of nocturnal creatures stirring to life. This, Elar said, gesturing to the beauty that surrounded them, is the true essence of summer in the forest. It is a time of intensity, of growth, and of preparation. As guardians, we must ensure that this balance is maintained, that the forest thrives, not just in summer, but in all seasons. Leora, her heart filled with a newfound respect and love for the forest and its cycles, nodded in agreement. She understood now that to be a guardian was to be a steward of balance, to protect and preserve the magic of the forest through the dance of the seasons. As the first chapter of her guardianship came to a close, Leora looked forward to the lessons and challenges that lay ahead. With Alar by her side, she was ready to face whatever the forest would bring. Her spirit ignited by the fierce blaze of summer, its waters cascading down a rocky face into a crystal clear pool below. It was a sight of unparalleled beauty, but it was what lay hidden behind the curtain of water that drew Alar and Leora closer. With a nod from Alar, they stepped through the waterfall, the cool water a brief veil, before emerging into the hidden glade beyond. This secret place, shielded from the outside world by the waterfall, was a sanctuary of peace and magic. Sunlight filtered through mist, casting rainbows that danced on the mossy ground. Flowers of every hue bloomed in abundance, and the air was alive with the hum of wings and the melody of birdsong. Alar turned to Leora, his eyes alight with the knowledge of ages. This glade, he began, his voice soft yet carrying in the tranquil air, is the heart of the forest's magic. It is here that the connection between the forest and the seasons is most potent. He led her to the center of the glade, where a stone pedestal stood, ancient and covered in moss. Upon it rested a crystal, clear as the waters that protected this sacred place, pulsating with an inner light. This crystal, Elar continued, is the source of the forest's magic, a gift from the earth itself. It binds the forest to the cycle of seasons, each one feeding into the next, a perpetual dance of life, death, and rebirth. Leora, her gaze fixed on the crystal, felt the pulse of magic beneath her feet, a connection so profound it stirred something within her. How do we protect it? She asked, aware of the weight of their guardianship. With respect, balance, and love, Ayla replied. The seasons must flow unimpeded, 
each one given its due. We, as guardians, ensure that the dance continues, that no force, whether from within or without, disrupts the harmony of this cycle. As the day waned, Alar shared the secrets of the seasons with Leora, of the spring's renewal, the summer's growth, the autumn's harvest, and the winter's rest. Each season was vital, each transition sacred. The crystal, in its silent vigil, ensured that the balance was maintained, its magic a gentle guide through the ebb and flow of time. Leora, now privy to one of the forest's deepest secrets, felt her connection to the land deepen. The responsibility of their charge was clear, and she pledged once again to protect the forest and its cycles, understanding now the source of its magic and the delicate balance it represented. As they left the hidden glade, stepping once more through the waterfall and into the world beyond. Leora took one last look at the secret sanctuary. She knew that the knowledge shared with her was a gift, a trust that she would carry with her always. Together, she and Ailer would guard the crystal and the magic it embodied, ensuring that the dance of the seasons would continue, unbroken and beautiful, for generations to come. With the secret of the forest's heart now shared, Leora and Ailer turned their steps toward a celebration that marked the culmination of summer's warmth and the abundance it brought forth. The Festival of Harvest was a time-honored tradition, a moment when all inhabitants of the enchanted forest, from the tiniest insect to the most ancient tree, came together in a celebration of gratitude and bounty. As the day of the festival dawned, the forest was alive with preparations. Creatures of every shape and size contributed in their own way, gathering nuts, berries, and fruits, decorating the glades with flowers and lanterns made from leaves that glowed with firefly light. The air was filled with the scent of ripening fruits and the sound of laughter and song, a testament to the joy that this day brought to all. Leora, witnessing the harmony and communal effort, felt a deep sense of belonging. She worked alongside Ailer, weaving garlands of flowers and setting tables with the forest's bounty. The woodland spirits, ethereal beings that seldom showed themselves, fluttered around, adding their magic to the preparations, ensuring that this festival would be remembered for seasons to come. As twilight descended, Casting a golden hue over the forest, the festival began. A clearing, encircled by ancient oaks, served as the gathering place. Here, a feast was laid out, a bounty that was both a gift from the forest and a tribute to it. Fruits, nuts, and berries of every kind were shared, along with honey and cakes, made 
made from the finest forest grains. Alar stood, raising his cup made from a hollowed-out cord, filled with sweet berry wine. Tonight, we celebrate the generosity of the forest, the bond that ties us all together, and the cycles that guide our lives. Let us remember the importance of balance, of giving back as much as we take, and let us give thanks for the abundance that sustains us. Cheers and joyful cries echoed through the clearing as creatures and spirits alike drank to his words. The festival was not just a feast of food, but of stories and songs, tales of seasons past, and hopes for those yet to come. Leora, moved by the unity and love that permeated the celebration, found herself sharing her own story of her journey from the world outside to the heart of the enchanted forest. The night grew deep, and the festival continued under the silver glow of the moon. Dances were danced, and songs were sung, the music a blend of voices both human and not, creating a melody as old as the forest itself. It was a night of magic, of laughter, and of shared dreams. A celebration that transcended the boundaries between species, united in their love for the forest. As the festival drew to a close, Leora and Alar stood together, watching the final dances. The bond between them, already strong, was cemented further by the shared experiences of the day. They were guardians, yes, but also part of a larger family, a community that thrived under their protection and care. The Festival of Harvest was a reminder of the cycles that governed life, of the importance of gratitude and balance. For Leora, it was a confirmation of her place within the forest, of the role she had been called to fulfill. And as the first light of dawn began to break over the horizon, signaling the end of the celebration, she knew that the path ahead would be filled with challenges, but also with beauty, with growth, and with the unending support of the forest and its inhabitants as the vibrant tapestry of summer began to fold into the rich, golden hues of autumn. The enchanted forest prepared for the season of harvest and reflection. It was a time of change, not just in the landscape, but within the hearts of those who called the forest home. For Prince Alar, the guardian of nature's cycle, this autumn brought a transformation unexpected and profound, a thawing of a heart long guarded. Leora, with her unwavering commitment and genuine love for the forest, had become not just a guardian alongside Alar, but a companion whose presence lit the shorter days. Her laughter, bright and sincere, echoed through the forest glades, stirring a warmth in Alar that he had not anticipated. The bond they shared, forged in the trials and triumphs of guardianship, had deepened, transcending the duties that first brought them together. 
The forest, in its timeless wisdom, seemed to whisper of this change. The leaves rustling with a sound like gentle laughter. The brooks murmuring approval. Even the wind, playful and brisk, carried the scent of new beginnings, of possibilities yet to unfold. Alar found himself seeking Lior's company, not just for the tasks that needed attention, but for the simple joy of shared moments. Together, they walked the forest paths, watching as the canopy transformed into a blaze of reds, oranges, and golds. They spoke of many things, the lessons of the past seasons, the anticipation of the first frost, and the stories the forest held within its ancient heart. One evening, as the sun dipped low, painting the sky in shades of crimson and gold, Alar and Leora stood at the edge of a clearing, watching the horizon. The air was cool, carrying the promise of the coming night. It was then that Alar, his heart emboldened by the beauty around them and the closeness of Leora, spoke words of truth long held silent. Leora, he began, his voice a soft echo in the twilight. When you came to the forest, I saw in you a kindred spirit, a soul drawn to the magic and mystery of this place. But as the seasons have turned, I have come to see so much more. Your strength, your compassion, and your unwavering dedication have awakened something within me. A warmth I had thought lost. Leora turned to him, her eyes reflecting the hues of the sky. A mixture of surprise and deep emotion flickering within them. Aelar, she replied, her voice steady yet filled with the emotion of the moment. I came to the forest seeking wonder, but I found a home, a purpose, and she paused, her gaze locked with his, a connection. I never imagined. You have been my guide, my protector, and my friend. But in your eyes, I see the reflection of my own heart. In that moment, as the last light of the sun vanished beyond the horizon, a new chapter began for Alar and Leora. No longer just guardians of the enchanted forest. They were two hearts bound by a love as deep and enduring as the ancient woods that had brought them together. The forest, ever watchful, seemed to embrace this union. The trees swaying gently, the stars twinkling brighter in the velvet sky. For in the cycle of the seasons, amidst the eternal dance of life and growth, love too had found its place. A warmth to hold back the chill of winter, a flame to light the darkest nights. In the heart of the enchanted forest, where love had bloomed amidst the autumnal splendor, a shadow began to creep at the fringes of this verdant paradise. Unseen yet palpably present, it whispered through the underbrush and slithered between the trees. A chill that presaged a threat not just to the guardians, but to the very essence of the forest. 
Alar and Leora, their hearts newly intertwined, sensed this encroaching darkness, a discord in the symphony of nature's harmony. The forest, a beacon of life and magic, had always faced challenges, but this was different. An insidious force that sought to unravel the threads of balance and peace. As the days shortened and the nights grew longer, the guardians observed the changes. Animals, once vibrant and full of the forest's bounty, moved with caution, their songs and calls dimmed by unease. Plants, too, showed signs of distress, their once bright colors fading, their growth stunted by an unseen blight. The woodland spirits, ever elusive, appeared to Aylar and Leora, their ethereal forms flickering like flames in the gathering gloom. The forest is in peril, they whispered, their voices a chorus of wind and leaves. A darkness seeks to sever the connection between the land and the cycle of seasons, to freeze the heart of the forest in eternal shadow. Determined to protect their home, Alar and Leora sought the source of this threat, their steps guided by the spirits and the subtle signs of the forest itself. Their journey took them to the oldest parts of the forest, where the trees reached high into the sky, their branches knitting a canopy of ancient protection here in a clearing lit by the pale light of the moon, they found the heart of the darkness, a rift, a tear in the very fabric of the forest's magic. From this fissure, a cold, unnatural mist seeped forth, poisoning the land, threatening to extinguish the life that thrived within. Alar. His knowledge of the forest's magic deep and true recognized the rift as a manifestation of imbalance, a consequence of a broken vow or a forgotten duty. The forest is a reflection of the world beyond its borders, he explained to Leora, his voice tinged with sorrow. Its health and harmony depend on the balance of forces, both within and without. This rift, it is a sign that such balance has been disrupted. Together, they stood before the rift, the resolve firm. We must heal this breach, Leora declared, her voice steady despite the swirling darkness. Not just for the forest and its creatures, but for the cycle of seasons, for the balance of nature itself. With hearts united and spirits bolstered by the love and trust they shared, Alar and Leora embarked on a quest to mend the rift. Drawing upon the ancient magic of the forest, the wisdom of the spirits, and the strength of their newfound bond, they sought to confront the darkness, to restore the light and warmth that were the lifeblood of the enchanted realm. The task would not be easy, nor the path clear. But together, they faced the gathering shadows, guardians not just of the forest, but of all that it represented. A 
haven of magic, a sanctuary of life, and a testament to the enduring power of balance and love. Amidst the gathering shadows and the whisper of a threat that crept along the edges of the enchanted forest, the time came for the ancient autumn equinox ritual. A rite of balance and renewal, it was essential now more than ever. As Alar and Leora stood as the guardians, not only of the forest's present, but its future. The ritual held on the cusp of day and night when light and darkness were in perfect balance, symbolized the forest's deep connection to the cycle of seasons and the enduring dance of life and decay. As the day of the equinox dawned, the forest itself seemed to hold its breath. The usual chorus of wildlife subdued, as if in anticipation of the event to come. Aylar and Leora, their resolve strengthened by the trials they faced together, prepared for the ritual with reverence and a sense of urgency. The darkness that sought to unmake the forest's harmony had to be addressed, and the ritual was the key to fortifying the land's ancient magic. The center of the ritual was the ancient grove, where the oldest trees of the forest stood guard over a clearing, their branches interlocking high above to form a natural cathedral. Here, the ground was covered in a carpet of fallen leaves their colors a testament to the season's beauty. At the grove's heart stood an ancient stone altar, weathered by time but still strong, its surface carved with symbols that told of the forest's history and the guardians who had stood before them. Alar and Leora dressed in robes of deep green, the color of the forest's heart, approached the altar with solemn steps. They carried with them offerings, seeds for planting, water from the forest's purest spring, and a wreath of autumn leaves, symbols of life, purity, and change. These were laid upon the altar as tokens of respect and pledges of their commitment to the forest and its well-being. Together, they began the chant, an ancient melody that seemed to rise from the earth itself, a call to the forces of nature to join in the ritual. The air around them shimmered with a subtle magic, the light softening as if in respect, and the forest's essence gathered, lending its power to the guardian's plea. The cycle of seasons turns from birth to growth, from decline to rest. Alar's voice rang clear and true, echoing through the grove. We stand at the balance, seeking harmony, offering our strength to mend what has been torn, to protect what must endure. Leora, her voice joining Aylar's, added, Let the darkness be held at bay. Let the light find its path. We pledge ourselves to the forest's care. In this life and beyond, guardians of the balance, keepers of the ancient trust. As their voices fell silent, 
a profound stillness enveloped the grove. Then, a soft glow began to emanate from the altar, spreading through the clearing. A visible sign of the forest's acceptance of their ritual. The darkness at the forest's edge receded. Its advance halted by the renewal of the land's ancient protections. The ritual complete, Alar and Leora stood together, their hands joined, feeling the deepening of their connection to each other and to the land they were sworn to protect. They had reaffirmed their vows to the forest and its cycles, and in doing so, had woven their spirits more closely with the very essence of the enchanted realm. As they left the grove, the forest seemed to sigh in relief. The normal sounds of wildlife slowly resuming. A chorus of life that celebrated the guardian's success. The autumn equinox ritual had not only strengthened the forest's defenses, but it also deepened the bond between Aelar and Leora, a union of hearts that promised to be the forest's greatest protection against the shadows that sought to engulf it. Following the solemnity of the autumn equinox ritual, a sense of peace and renewal settled over the enchanted forest. The guardians, Alar and Leora, had stood firm in their commitment, their unity and resolve weaving new strength into the fabric of the forest's magic. As day gave way to night, an air of anticipation whispered through the leaves, a promise of something wondrous yet to come. As the darkness enveloped the world, the forest's inhabitants gathered once again in the ancient grove, drawn by a sense of celebration and a mysterious, beckoning light. Above, the sky began to shift. A tapestry of black velvet slowly pierced by the first glimmers of an ethereal glow. It started gently, a soft luminescence at the edge of the world, but grew in intensity and beauty until the heavens themselves were ablaze with auroras. Shimmering curtains of green, purple, and gold that danced across the sky. This was the night of shimmering lights, a rare and sacred event that marked the forest's enduring strength and the success of the autumn equinox ritual. The auroras, with their otherworldly beauty, were a sign of the forest's gratitude, a display of magic that reached beyond the realm of the tangible, touching the hearts and spirits of all who beheld it. Aelar and Leora, standing side by side, gazed upward, their faces alight with wonder. The challenges they had faced, the darkness that had sought to undermine the balance of nature, seemed but a distant memory beneath the celestial spectacle. This was a moment of unity, not just for the two guardians, but for every creature, spirit, and tree within the forest a shared experience of beauty and magic that transcended the ordinary. The woodland creatures, from the smallest mouse to the stately deer, 
watched in silent reverence, their eyes reflecting the myriad colors that painted the night sky, the spirits of the forest, their forms barely visible in the glowing light, danced and twirled among the auroras, their joy a visible melody that added to the enchantment of the evening. Leora, moved by the beauty around her, found words of an ancient song rising unbidden to her lips. It was a hymn of the forest, of cycles and seasons, of life and the enduring magic that bound them all. Her voice, clear and true, wove through the grove, a human note in the symphony of the night of shimmering lights. Alar joined her, his voice harmonizing with hers, their song a pledge of guardianship, a vow to protect the balance and beauty of the world that had embraced them. Together, they sang for the forest, for the cycles that guided it, and for the love that had grown between them, as strong and enduring as the ancient woods that surrounded them. As the night deepened, the auroras slowly faded, their colors dimming, until the sky was once again a canvas of stars. The night of shimmering lights drew to a close, leaving behind a sense of awe and a renewed commitment to the sacred charge of guardianship. The forest, having shown its strength and its gratitude, settled into a peaceful slumber, its inhabitants carrying with them the memory of the night's beauty. For Alar and Leora, the night was a reaffirmation of their bond, a symbol of the enduring strength they found in each other and in the magic that flowed through the land. As dawn approached, heralding the arrival of a new day, the guardian stood watch over the slumbering forest, their hearts full, their spirits buoyed by the knowledge that together they could face any challenge that lay ahead. The night of shimmering lights with its ethereal beauty and profound magic was a testament to the power of balance of unity and of love, a beacon of hope for the future, shining bright in the hearts of those who had witnessed its glory. With the close of the Night of Shimmering Lights, Chapter 2 concludes, leaving Ayalar and Leora more connected to each other and to the enchanted forest than ever before. Their journey together, marked by trials and triumphs, continues to unfold, a testament to the enduring magic of the forest and the unbreakable bond between its guardians. As the seasons turn, new adventures await promising further challenges, discoveries, and the continued dance of the cycles that govern the natural world. Chapter 3. The Cycle Completes As the final leaves of autumn fell, a hush descended upon the enchanted forest, signaling the arrival of winter the vibrant tapestry of life that had flourished under the summer sun and the golden hues of autumn 
now lay hidden beneath the pristine blanket of snow. It was a time of rest and reflection when the forest gathered its strength, preparing for the cycle to begin anew. Yet, amidst this tranquil beauty, a sense of foreboding lingered in the air, a chill that spoke of a darkness that refused to recede, threatening the eternal cycle that sustained all life within the forest. Aelar and Leora, now more than guardians, but stewards of a profound bond that intertwined their fates with the forest itself, felt the weight of this threat keenly. The night of shimmering lights had been a beacon of hope, a testament to the forest's enduring strength. But the darkness at its fringes had not been vanquished. It lurked, patient and persistent, a silent echo that grew louder as the days shortened and the nights grew longer. The first snows had transformed the forest into a realm of whispered beauty, where every tree, every branch, was adorned with the filigree of ice. The air was crisp, carrying the scent of pine and the promise of silence, a peace that belied the tension that lay beneath the creatures of the forest. Those who did not slumber through the winter months moved cautiously, their instincts alert to the subtle shifts in their world. Alar and Leora, wrapped in cloaks of deepest green, walked the paths of their realm, their steps leaving faint impressions in the freshly fallen snow. They spoke little, their communication transcending words, a communion of spirits attuned to the heart of the forest. Their mission was clear, to uncover the source of the darkness that threatened their home and to restore the balance that had been the forest's guardian for time immemorial. As they ventured deeper into the forest, towards the ancient grove where the autumn equinox ritual had been performed, they found the first signs of imbalance. A circle of trees, once vibrant and full of life, now stood silent, their branches bare, the ground around them scorched and barren, as if touched by frost, yet emanating a cold that was unnatural, a blight upon the land. The darkness seeks to sever the forest's connection to the cycle of seasons, Aylar murmured, his voice a blend of anger and sorrow. It strikes at the heart of our world, seeking to freeze the cycle in eternal winter, a never-ending silence that would doom all life within. Leora, her resolve as fierce as the winter wind, nodded. Then we must act, not just as guardians, but as champions of the cycle itself. We must find the source of this blight and heal it for the forest, for the creatures who call it home, and for the future that hangs in the balance. Their decision made, Elar and Leora set forth, their journey taking them beyond the familiar paths 
into the wild and uncharted heart of the forest. It was a perilous journey, fraught with challenges, both physical and spiritual, as the darkness sought to ensnare their hearts with fear and doubt. Yet, their bond, forged in the fires of trials past and strengthened by the love they shared, was a light that pierced the gloom, guiding them onward. The winter's silent echo, a reminder of the threat that loomed, became a call to arms, a challenge that Ailer and Leora would meet with courage and determination. For in their hearts, they carried the hope of the forest, the promise of renewal, and the indomitable spirit of the cycle that turns, relentless and beautiful, from season to season. In the heart of the winter's chill, beneath the silent watch of stars, the forest's fate hung in the balance, its future shadowed by the relentless advance of an unseen foe. Ailer and Leora, undaunted by the cold that sought to claim their world, pressed on, guided by the faint light of hope that flickered like a flame against the encroaching darkness. As they journeyed deeper into the heart of the forest, where the silence was a weight upon the soul, a realization dawned upon Alar. The time had come for him to embrace the destiny that had long been whispered by the wind and written in the stars. He was to become the verdant prince, the embodiment of the forest's deepest magic, a being of pure nature's power. This transformation was not without its price, for to tap into the ancient magic of the forest meant to offer oneself as a conduit, to become one with the land in a bond that transcended the physical. It was a sacrifice born of love, love for the forest, for the creatures that called it home, and for Leora, whose presence had become the beacon that guided him through the darkest nights. In a clearing, where the moonlight cast a silver glow upon the snow, Aylar turned to Leora, his eyes reflecting the turmoil and determination that waged war within his heart. The path I must walk now is one I must walk alone, he said, his voice tinged with sorrow. The magic I seek to wield is ancient and wild, bound to the very essence of the forest. It is a power that can turn the tide, but it demands a price, a piece of my soul, intertwined forever with the land we seek to protect. Leora, her heart heavy with the weight of his words, reached for his hand, her touch a promise, a lifeline in the storm. You will not be alone, she vowed, her voice steady with conviction. Wherever your journey takes you, whatever the cost, I will be with you, in spirit and in truth. Our bond is stronger than any darkness, and together we will face whatever comes. With the final embrace, a farewell charged with unspoken promises and the certainty of reunion, Alar stepped back, closing his eyes as he opened his heart to the forest, 
he called upon the ancient magic, the legacy of the guardians who had come before. And as he did, the air around him shimmered, the very fabric of reality bending to his will. The transformation was a spectacle of nature's grace, leaves and vines swirling around him, wrapping him in their embrace as the power of the forest flooded through his veins. When the light faded and the leaves settled once more upon the snow, Alar was transformed. He stood taller, his form radiating a green luminescence, his eyes aglow with the verdant light of life itself. He was the verdant prince, the forest made flesh, its defender and champion. Leora, awestruck by the sight, felt the power that emanated from him, a force as gentle as it was formidable. Alar, in this form, was both the guardian she knew and something far greater, a being of the forest's deepest essence. With a nod, a silent acknowledgement of the path they had chosen, Aylor, now the verdant prince, turned towards the heart of the darkness. The battle to come would be one of magic and might, a clash between the ancient guardianship of the forest and the shadow that sought to unmake it. As he moved forward, the forest responded, the trees bending in his wake, the snow melting beneath his steps, heralding the return of the verdant prince, a beacon of hope in the forest's darkest hour. As the verdant prince forged ahead, a manifestation of the forest's indomitable will, Leora found herself alone in the quietude of the snow-clad world. The transformation she had witnessed, Alar's surrender to the ancient magic, had stirred something within her, a dormant seed of hope and power that had lain buried in the depths of her spirit. The forest, Sensing her resolve and the purity of her intention, whispered secrets long kept. Secrets of the bond between guardian and land, of the magic that coursed through vein and root. Leora listened, her heart open, as the wind carried tales of those who had stood where she stood of the sacrifices made and the victories won in the name of balance and harmony. It was then, in the stillness of the winter night, that Leora discovered her own connection to the forest, a connection as profound and elemental as the bond that had transformed Aylor into the verdant prince. She realized that her journey to the forest, her trials and triumphs alongside Aylor, had been but the first steps in uncovering the true depth of her role as a guardian. With this realization, the seed of hope within her began to bloom, unfurling like a flower, touched by the first rays of dawn. A warmth spread through her, chasing away the cold, imbuing her with a strength she had not known she possessed. It was the strength of the earth, of the endless cycle of life 
that the forest embodied, a promise of renewal and resilience. Standing tall, Leora felt the magic of the forest coalesce around her, a cloak of verdant light that echoed the transformation she had witnessed in Aelar. She understood now that her power lay not in dominion over the natural world, but in unity with it, in the shared destiny of all who called the forest home. With a newfound determination, Leora set forth to join Eiler, to stand beside him, not just as a companion, but as an equal, a guardian in her own right. The path through the snow, once daunting in its silence, now welcomed her, the trees bowing in recognition of her purpose, the very earth guiding her steps. As she neared the heart of the darkness, where Aelar, now the verdant prince, battled to restore the balance threatened by the encroaching shadow, Leora felt the seed of hope within her blossom into a beacon, a light that pierced the gloom. She was ready, ready to face whatever lay ahead, to wield the magic of the forest and the power of her own heart in defense of the world they had sworn to protect. The confrontation that awaited them would be the ultimate test of their guardianship, a battle not just of might, but of spirit. Yet, as Leora stepped into the fray, her resolve unwavering, she carried with her the seed of hope, a testament to the enduring power of love, of unity, and of the eternal cycle that bound them all. In the heart of the forest, where the battle between light and shadow reached its zenith. Ilar, now the embodiment of the forest's ancient will as the verdant prince, and Leora, her spirit alight with newfound power, stood ready. The darkness, a creeping malevolence that sought to suffocate the life and magic of the forest, loomed before them its formless mass swirling with the promise of oblivion. The air crackled with energy, the tension of the imminent con- confrontation hanging heavy as the first notes of an unseen orchestra played the prelude to battle. This was the moment upon which the fate of the enchanted forest hinged, a clash not just of forces, but of ideals, the enduring cycle of life, death, and rebirth against the void of eternal stagnation. Alar, his form radiant with the green glow of life, raised his hand, from which vines and flowers sprang forth, weaving a tapestry of natural magic. Leora, standing beside him, her heart a beacon of hope, channeled the essence of her bond with the forest, her connection manifesting as a shield of shimmering light that enveloped them both. The darkness surged forward, a wave of despair and decay, 
but where it met the light and life wielded by the guardians. It faltered, its advance slowed by the power of the forest's defenders. Alar and Leora moved as one, their actions harmonized by the deep bond they shared. Each strike against the darkness, a testament to their determination, their love for the forest, and for each other. As the battle raged, the forest itself seemed to rise in defense of its guardians. Trees bent and swayed, their branches lashing out against the encroaching shadow. Animals, small and large, lent their voices to the cacophony, a chorus of defiance against the silence promised by the darkness. The very earth trembled, roots breaking through the frozen ground to ensnare and hold back the spread of the void. In the climax of their struggle, Alar and Leora combined their powers, channeling the full might of the forest's magic into a single, decisive blow. Light and life, hope and strength, converged in a blinding flash that pierced the heart of the darkness, a lance of pure energy that sought the source of the corruption, the wound in the world that had allowed such malevolence to fester. The explosion of light that followed was a sight beyond words, a bloom of radiance that washed over the forest, touching every leaf, every branch, every hidden burrow with its cleansing glow. The darkness, unable to withstand the assault, recoiled and shattered, its presence dissipating like smoke in the wind, leaving behind no trace of its passage, save for the memories of those who had stood against it. As the light faded, Alar and Leora, their forms no longer aglow, but still radiant with the strength of their victory, looked upon the forest they had saved. The balance had been restored, the cycle secured for another turn of the seasons. The threat that had sought to undo the fabric of their world was vanquished, but the Guardians knew that vigilance was the price of peace, that the balance they had fought for must be maintained day by day, season by season. Together, they had faced the darkness, and together, they had prevailed. Their bond, forged in adversity and sealed in triumph, was a symbol of the forest's resilience, a promise that as long as there were guardians like Ailer and Leora, the magic of the forest would endure, eternal and unbroken. In the quiet aftermath of their monumental victory, the enchanted forest began to heal, its wounds mending under the tender care of its guardians. Ailer and Leora, their spirits intertwined with the land they had sworn to protect, found themselves at the dawn of a new chapter, not just in the story of the forest, but in the tale of their hearts. As the forest awakened from its wintry slumber, stirring with the promise of spring, so too did their bond evolve, blossoming into a love profound and enduring. This love, 
born of shared trials and triumphs, mirrored the eternal cycle of the seasons, ever-changing, yet constant in its renewal. They walked together through the woods, now vibrant with the fresh hues of spring, witnessing the rebirth that followed the darkness they had vanquished. Every bud that unfurled, every leaf that whispered in the wind, spoke of resilience and hope, of the beauty that arises from the ashes of trial. Alar, once the stoic guardian, had found in Leora a kindred spirit, a partner in his eternal vigil. The walls he had built around his heart, necessary shields against the burdens of his duty, had crumbled in the face of her steadfast courage and unwavering support. In her, he saw not just a companion or ally, but the very essence of the forest's magic, wild, beautiful, and boundless. Leora, for her part, had embarked on her journey to the forest, seeking wonder, and found a world beyond her dreams. In Ailer, she discovered not just the guardian of that world, but a soul as deep and intricate as the woods he protected. His strength became her refuge, his wisdom her guide, and in the warmth of his love, she found her home. Together, they pledged their hearts beneath the boughs of an ancient oak, a witness to countless seasons and the silent keeper of the forest's lore. Their vows were simple, spoken in the language of the land a promise to walk the paths of life side by side, to share in the joys and sorrows, and to nurture the love that had grown between them, as enduring as the cycle of the seasons. The forest, in its timeless wisdom, embraced their union, the breeze carrying whispers of congratulations the brooks murmuring joyous melodies, the creatures of the woods, from the smallest insect to the majestic deer, gathered in silent witness, a testament to the harmony that Aylar and Leora had fought to preserve. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of gold and purple, Aylar and Leora stood hand in hand, gazing into the future. They understood that the path ahead would be filled with challenges, that the balance they had restored would need constant vigilance. But in their love, they found the strength to face whatever might come, a bond as resilient as the forest that had brought them together. Their love was a reflection of the forest itself, ever-changing yet rooted in the eternal truths of life and growth. In their hearts, they carried the essence of the seasons, a love that would blossom in the warmth of summer deepen with the richness of autumn. Find peace in the stillness of winter and renew with the promise of spring. As the first tender shoots of spring broke through the thawing earth, heralding the cycle's renewal, the enchanted forest prepared for a celebration unlike any before. This was the coronation of spring, 
not just the season's welcoming, but the anointing of Aelar and Leora as the forest's guardians, a recognition of their journey, their battles fought, and their love that had blossomed amidst the whispering trees. The forest, vibrant with the new life of spring, was alive with preparations. Flowers bloomed with extra brilliance, their hues a canvas of nature's artistry, while the ancient trees adorned themselves in their finest green, rustling in anticipation. The air was filled with the sweet melody of birdsong, a chorus that seemed to sing of the bravery and love of the forest's protectors. In the heart of the forest, where the great oak stood tall and majestic, a clearing had been transformed. Here, beneath the sprawling branches, the creatures of the forest gathered, their presence a testament to the unity of the natural world. The woodland spirits, ethereal and shimmering, floated amongst the crowd, their forms aglow with the magic that permeated the land. Ayalar and Leora, hand in hand, stepped into the clearing, their eyes reflecting the verdant beauty that surrounded them. They were dressed in robes of deep forest green, interwoven with threads of silver and gold, the fabric a gift from the forest itself, created from the finest silk of spider's weave and the softest moss. Around them, the air thrummed with the power of ancient magic, the very essence of the land bearing witness to this moment. At the base of the great oak, an altar had been erected, upon which lay a crown of intertwined branches and a circlet of blooming flowers. These were the symbols of their guardianship, tokens of the forest's trust and their bond to the land and each other. The crowning would seal their vows, not just to each other, but to the forest that had called them, to the magic that had bound their fates. The ceremony was presided over by the eldest of the woodland spirits, a being as old as the forest itself, its form shifting between light and shadow. With a voice that was the whisper of leaves and the murmur of streams, it spoke of the cycles of nature, of the balance that governed all life, and of the bravery and love that had preserved the magic of the forest. Ayeler and Leora, the spirit intoned, you have stood as the forest's defenders, its champions against the darkness. Today, you are recognized as its guardians, the keepers of its legacy. Do you vow to protect its magic, to nurture its life, and to uphold the balance of nature? With voices firm and hearts full, Aylar and Leora spoke their vows, a promise that echoed through the clearing, as timeless as the land itself. We vow to protect, to nurture, and to uphold, together, for as long as the cycles turn. The spirit, its form brightening with a radiant light, placed the crown and circlet upon their heads, 
a symbol of their authority and their bond. The forest erupted in celebration, a jubilant chorus of voices, both seen and unseen, rejoicing in the coronation of their guardians. As the ceremony concluded, Aelar and Leora stood before the gathered assembly, crowned not just as guardians, but as symbols of hope and renewal. Their journey, marked by adversity and triumph, had led them to this moment, a new beginning not just for them, but for the forest they had sworn to protect. The coronation of spring was not just an acknowledgement of the season's return, but a celebration of the eternal cycle, of life that continues, ever renewing, ever enduring. Under the watchful eyes of Aelar and Leora, the forest would thrive, its magic preserved for generations to come. A testament to the power of unity, of love, and of the indomitable spirit of the natural world. <laughs>